This is KION News Channel 546 at 11. Thanks for being here. I'm Alicia Machado. Residents are still unsettled tonight after a violent hate crime in Santa Cruz. You can see the true power of this fire by all the damage that's left behind here on Pine Canyon Road. The area I'm standing in was once a shed now burnt down to the foundation. All that's left here is some bricks and rubble. The big news came this morning out of Pennsylvania, which took Biden over the top in the race to 270. Let's take a look at the map now. Now in Pennsylvania at stake 20 electoral votes here, and it was a pretty close race. Let's zoom in here. The firefight not just happening here around California tonight. Firefighters are working around the clock, battling out of control wildfires. As Dania Bacchus reports, the fires have claimed five lives and forced tens of thousands from their homes. Take a look at this white pickup truck here that police say suspect 29 year old Jordan Ramirez crashed into a parked car before he barricaded himself in a shed. This set off a five hour standoff with police. Live breaking news from KION News Channel 546. We begin tonight with breaking news and arrest following a deadly deputy ambush in Santa Cruz County. It's our top story tonight at 11. Thanks for joining us. I'm Alicia Machado. The arrest in the ambush happened after a string of violence. 15 people injured, four fatalities, including the shooter, but still police are looking for a second suspect, and so people are still shaken up. You can see small flames are still rising from the rubble at this home on Pine Canyon Road and other evacuees wonder if this is what they'll return to. Todavía se puede ver el humo por encima de las montañas, pero este humo también se está moviendo a otras partes de la costa central. Check it in now with Chief Meteorologist Dan Sianca, who is tracking Tropical Storm ECS from here in the Weather Center. Dan, what are you noticing about this as it continues to develop? The National Hurricane Center says Ada has sustained winds of 40 miles per hour and is expected to make landfall in Nicaragua early Tuesday. And some good news for you. Save room for dessert because today is National Ice Cream Day. This has got to be one of my favorite days of the year. Coming up, the history of this frozen treat from thousands thousands of years ago to today. Here's how it works with an at home kit. You provide a small sample of saliva for the lab to analyze. It contains DNA from cells around your mouth. Then just pack up the kit and ship your kit off to the lab. A police officer is on administrative leave tonight after an unusual shooting late last night in Monterey. We begin tonight with breaking news. The river fire has exploded in size tonight. You're getting a live picture from the KION studios near Salinas Airport. The fire is now 2,000 acres in size and only 10% contained. There are mandatory evacuations in place. And this video just in tonight, massive flames at night on the hillside from River Road. KION's Megan Meyer talked to some of those evacuees scrambling to get out of the way of those flames. But we start with Josh Cristianto, who is live in Salinas with the very latest on this fire. Josh, what do you see in there? This is all that's left of a Chevy Camaro after it flew off a cliff on the Big Sur coast and went up in a blaze, an accident that killed two people. The heavy police presence in Salinas tonight as a standoff continues. Dozens of officers and a SWAT team are surrounding a residence on First Avenue and Fairhaven Street. The standoff is now entering its sixth hour right now. Tonight we're learning that this all may be part of an alleged robbery. The district also has these large larger thermal scanners, which they plan to utilize if they're able to hold in person classes again. While some scanners can only take the temperature for one person, this one can scan multiple individuals at one time. And evacuees are still in shock after having to leave their homes. But what I really want to show you now is how powerful this wind is. Take a look at this piece of paper here that I have with me. You can see it's just whirling around with these heavy winds, something that's a concern for firefighters tonight. The auto shop's co-owner says it's pretty tough to keep away determined thieves, so the best thing you can do is make it more difficult for your car to become a target. Try parking in a well-lit area or try backing your vehicle into a driveway or garage. La escuela espera que más de 400 estudiantes lleguen aquí a registrarse. Los estudiantes no necesitan salir de su coche y lo hicieron para mantener el distanciamiento social. 
Welcome back in your health alert tonight. Contact tracing is effective in preventing the spread of coronavirus, but the process needs to be fast. Citrus trees like lemons and oranges are sensitive to the frost, but there's a simple way you can protect these fruit trees. All you have to do is grab a string of Christmas lights and wrap them around the branches. If you're a thrill seeker, you might have skydiving on your bucket list, but would you jump out of a plane in your 80s? Coming up, a group of veterans takes the leap. Welcome back in your consumer alert. Social distancing has fewer people reaching for the deodorant and more people reaching for ice cream. That's according to the consumer goods company Unilever. Thursday, the company said there has been a drop in demand for personal care items. Brands like Dove Soap and Axe Deodorant say that lockdowns have led to a decline in sales. At the same time, ice cream brands such as Breyers, Ben and Jerry's and Magnum saw their sales increase. I'm guilty of that. I've definitely been guilty getting some more ice cream lately. Alicia, what's your favorite color of crayon? Yellow. yellow I would have to say it. I'm okay. a bright and happy person. There I need a yellow go. crayon. Burnt sienna for me. That's all. I love it. It's a good choice. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. You can see the true power of this fire by all the damage that's left behind here on Pine Canyon Road. The area I'm standing in was once a shed, now burnt down to the foundation. All that's left here is some bricks and rubble. I can't believe how much is gone. Neighbors are shocked to see their backyards charred and blackened. Smoke and ashes still billowing around the hillside south of Salinas one day after the river fire sparked near Pine Canyon. Some homes left in ruins. Others damaged on the outside, but the inside spared. We're lucky we, we've kept all the houses. My house is down below here. My brother's is over across the canyon. I got a cousin over here. The way it come through that brush yesterday, I've never seen anything like that. Brad Tarp lost a garage, a shed, and some of his father's belongings at their old family home. We grew up here. My folks built the house back here in 48. This was built in the 50s. Firefighters are mopping up to make sure the flames won't reignite, spraying down torched brush and wood. It'll be a process to clean up all the rubble, but some of the homeowners in the fire's path will have to wait. They're now left looking for a place to wait it out. They don't really want us here in the house. We have no water. We have no power. You can see small flames are still rising from the rubble at this home on Pine Canyon Road, and other evacuees wonder if this is what they'll return to. It's been pretty terrifying. We've had fires on this road before, nothing of this magnitude. Locals tell me neighbors are banding together to help save each other's properties, doing anything they can to try to limit the destruction before they have to leave. We've been watering the property with sprinklers and just dousing everything we can. But the devastation left behind sends a clear message. The fire's rage is powerful. Cal Fire is stressing that it's important for residents to leave when asked to for their safety. Cal Fire says this area is still not safe for people to come back to, but they hope to have a timeline within the next 24 hours. Back to you. The woman who took the video tells me she's sharing her story to stop the cycle of racism. She says no one should tolerate the racist remarks her family encountered, unprovoked and unwarranted. Asian piece of Oh my God. It's triggering, you know, like it can be really hard to relive it and hear those words. A shocking encounter caught on camera in the Carmel Valley. A viral video on social media shows a diner saying racist remarks against an Asian family at the Bernardus Lodge and Spas Lucia restaurant. Jordan Chan tells me this all happened as her family was celebrating her aunt's birthday on the 4th of July. We were singing happy birthday and we were just taking pictures, just goofing around with each other. And then all of a sudden, um, that man, Michael Lofthouse, starts making really, really loud racist remarks at us. As the situation escalated, that's when she started recording. In the video, you can hear the man cursing. Chance says he seemed drunk. You need to leave. Oh, you need to leave. No, you need to leave. That's when a waitress stepped in asking the man to leave. Right now, get out of here. Yeah, I'm out. Get out. I've dealt with racism as well, but never on that scale, never on that level to the point where somebody completely unprovoked felt obligated to voice out their hatred for absolutely no reason, just because they're filled with that much hatred. And because what? Because we're 
different skin color. Some social media users say the man in the video is Michael Lofthouse, the founder of a San Francisco IT company who appears to have commented on the video before it was removed. In a statement to KION News, Vice President and General Manager of Bernardas, Sean Damery said, quote, this is an extremely unfortunate situation. However, we are proud of our staff at Lucia in keeping with Bernardus Lodge's core values. This incident was handled swiftly and the diner was escorted off the property without further escalation. Damory also apologized to the guests. In addition to the support Chan is receiving on social media tonight, I'm also learning people are showing support for the waitress in the video. I'm told they're sending her donations for how she handled the situation and she plans to donate them to the ACLU. Now, I reached out to Lofthouse for comment, but he did not respond to our request. In the Carmel Valley, Alicia Machado, KIOA News Channel 546. Well, the vigil outside the sheriff's office here is growing tonight, but I can tell from speaking with friends that Sergeant Gutzweiler's reach extends far beyond his work here at the sheriff's office. People who are close to him say he was a genuine person, kind, honest, and enjoyed having fun. A memorial stands with dozens of flowers and messages of support for Sergeant Damon Gutzweiler, the 38-year-old killed in the line of duty. He gave his life to protect me. But before Gunsweiler joined the sheriff's office in 2006, people knew him as Damon, a member of the Aptos High Class of 1999 and a local. Friends tell me he enjoyed dirt biking, running and outdoor activities. And a high school friend who went to winter formal with him had only kind words to say. Damon was always genuinely kind. Um, he was friendly to everyone and he had a great sense of humor. Longtime friend Nicholas Like and many others were heartbroken to hear the news. At my house, we were just devastated. We couldn't not imagine that it happened to him. Damon was a groomsman in Like's wedding, and he texted Damon on the tragic day after hearing that a deputy in his department was injured, only to later find out that it was Damon. It shouldn't happen to anybody, but it hurts when it's people that you love and People continue to bring flowers to the vigil days after the tragic news of his death. I just wanted to show my respect for what he did, what he gave his life for.